Welcome, welcome. I'm Will Whitfield with W3 Productions. If you watch some of my previous tutorials, um, you'll see where I've talked about how to import a Genesis 8 or Genesis 3 character from Dash Studio into Blender um, 2.8 um, using two different methods. One, the FBX uh, format method or the DAS importer method from Diffeomorphic um, made by Thomas Larson. And I also compared the two in one, at least one video. And, while, and at the time, I could only really bring in characters with animation with the FBX method. The DAS importer method, you couldn't do that. You had to manually animate your character. But it gave you better um, shaders and a better setup overall for your character. So I preferred it, except for you couldn't really do animations uh, very quickly. Happened to go on the Diffeomorphic website the other day and I saw this add-on that I've been waiting on for about a year. Uh, they released the BVH uh, Retargeter, which is basically the make wall add-on that was in Blender a couple of years ago um, that worked with the Make Human if you're familiar with Make Human which is a character creator that you can take those characters and import them into Blender or many other 3D programs. So they've updated it for Blender 2.8. It's just a Blender add-on that you add on like any other add-on with a zip file and it creates a new tab on the properties window or tab area and it's not quite I guess it's still in development it's not you, right now the only thing they have is the, the development version so they're saying it's not stable yet but it's pretty good for what I've played with so far I'm going to go through the basics of it and not all the options but just a few of them uh, let's see. You do do need a basic um, st or standard armature with common names. They do account for a couple of different types of biped armatures, but don't go too crazy with the type that you're using. Uh, so far, I have not gotten Mixamo actions to import here. So you may be wondering what you can use. Um, you need BVH files. Which are with motion capture data. Um, you, there's a couple of sites out there that you can go and buy BVH files with motion capture data. Um, they do have a list here of where to find files that you can get for free. Um, some sites have paid in free data. I believe the Japanese one here, Ice Jeff Japan, is like that. The two that I've messed with in the past are the Carnegie Mellon collection. It has um, basically a collection of different sets. So I think it's like 135 sets. So I've downloaded most of those. So let me show you how that is kind of organized. So, And you have to download the DAS friendly collection. Um, that's the main address. And I believe you have to go here to get the ones that are friendly to BVH and DAS characters. So you download, not the whole thing at one time, but different folders, different groupings. So you have like groups one through nine. And each one comes with the same spreadsheet explaining what each one is because the actual BVH files are not labeled. They're just numbered. So if you open up the spreadsheet that comes with it, let's see, let's go to mocap data, so in set one, for example, you have 12 actions, and these are descriptions of the actions. Now the group five, and a lot of them are similar, but just had different variations. Like so one through nine will include all of these BVH files here. And I believe it goes all the way down to about 145. Yeah, somewhere around there. I don't think I downloaded all of them. They're okay. They might not be as precise as you would like them to be, but they can be a great start to get your animation workflow going. 
The other one I'm going to use today is the ACAD from Ohio State University. They are about four sets, two male, two female. Um, not as sizable as the Carnegie Mellon, but they, they are pretty good files. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, go to diffeomorphicblogspot.com. You download the zip file from their development site. I believe it's Bitbucket. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to import a DAS character, Genesis 8 female. First, let's make a little floor of this cube. So move this down one unit, GZ negative one. I'm going to scale it out everywhere but X -ax or Z axis. Scale, Shift Z, move this out. So now we have a floor just for aesthetics. Now I'm going to open up the DAS runtime, import DAS, let's go to characters, where's my character, here's a character from DAS Studio, you can watch one of my previous videos on how to do this or how to set this up. And it'll probably take a moment. And the reason I'm using a Genesis 8 female is that she is um her outfit set includes high heels and her feet are posed with the high heel post usually when you apply motion capture data after you have the foot pose set in it will overwrite that and the foot will be um, you know, flat again and the heels will be digging into the ground we don't have that issue here when we apply the motion capture data so that is very powerful. So the first thing I'm going to do is merge all these rigs or armatures into one. Each piece of clothing and hair has its own armature. So we don't want that. We want to only deal with one armature. So we expand this. And you see which ones have an armature. I'm going to hold control and select each one. Even the eyelashes have its own arm armature. Then I'm going to select, making sure the main armature is active and selected. With that done, I go to corrections and click on merge rigs. Now all those are just meshes and we they're all parented to this one armature. And now dealing dealing with the add-on itself, let's go here. This is our BVH add-on I've already had it installed. Before we go ahead and retarget a BVH file to this armature, um, it's recommended that you hide the meshes first. Otherwise, um, it'll take a long time to load because it's um, basically manipulating each frame forever however long your action is so in this case it's going to be over 200 frames when if you have your mesh visible it would take a lot longer supposedly almost 10 times longer unless you hide the mesh meshes so suggested that you take each mesh select them and add them to another collection and then hide that collection so with each one of those selected I'm going to hit M new collection I'm just going to call it Lila mesh And then hide that collection so when we load it won't take us long to load so with the armature selected I'm going to go ahead and load and retarget I'm going to find my armature or my BVH file again this is out of the ACAD Ohio University Ohio State University's collection it was also free and I have a walk animation that I want to apply I generally keep these options as default. Hit load and retarget. Take a few moments to load. All right, we see that when it loaded, it moved the character way off origin. So that's okay. 
we can fix that. I'm um, just going down the list, briefly going through some of the ones that I don't want to deal with, but just explain the ones that I know what they do. You can actually load a BVH file. It will create a new armature in your Blender scene if, instead of targeting a, a pre-existing one like I just did. You can rename, rescale, things like that. Um, it said you really don't mess with these options. They should stay the way they are, so that's fine. We'll be dealing quite a bit with edit actions. Um, the first one is inverse kinematics. You can switch your armature from forward kinematics to inverse and vice versa, or you can clear them out. Global edit. Shift animation, um, if you have two markers set up on your timeline, it will you can shift the keyframes on those between those two markers. The one I want to use right now is keep feet above floor. Now if you had a surface selected such as a plane or a cube, it would try to keep the armature's feet above that surface. If you have nothing selected but the armature, it will just try to keep it above the XY plane in your scene, basically at Z, Z equals zero. So that's all I'm going to do here. Um, hit keep feet above floor, hit OK. Now our armature is walking above the floor. So we scrub the timeline here. We see that we have a pretty smooth walk animation. And we can actually bring our mesh back so we can see what's going on. Deselect everything. Actually going to hide the armature for a moment just to get a clearer view and scrub the timeline and we have a pretty good walk animation like I said and we see that the feet don't um, morph back or trans you know rotate back to their default position they still still have the high heel position that is pretty cool all right so the feet are above floor. We have some um, other options to fix your animation, smooth out F curves, things like that. You can do that globally, or you can do it locally for each bone if you need to. The other thing I want to show very quickly is loop and repeat. Loop F curves, um, I'm probably not explaining this as well as I could. Um, basically, you set up two markers on your timeline and it will try to set those up as a loop. For example, a walk cycle, which is what we're going to do here. And then I'm going to use the repeat animation to continue that animation longer. So, for example, this one is about 230 frames. If I repeated it once, it would be over 400 frames, three times over 600, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and set that up. The first thing you want to do is add your markers. I'm just kind of leaning here. I guess that's part of the motion capture file, but okay. Um, or maybe it's the way you walk in high heels. I don't know. Uh, you want to find a frame at the beginning of your cycle and one at the end that are very much similar. Basically you're in the, in the same or similar pose. So that when you repeat it, there's not, there's not an interruption. So that's frame one right here. I'm just gonna split the window so we can see later on. Um, I'm estimating around 227. Let me zoom in here so we can compare right quick. That's the side view at frame one. Let's move this over. Change it to 227. Zoom in here. And they look about the same, wouldn't you think? So that's going to be our range. 
So at 227, I'm going to add a marker. And then back at frame one, I'm going to add another marker on the timeline. I'm going to select both of those markers. Go ahead and close one of these windows. So now I'm going to click on loop F curves. Um, one option I will use is delete outside keyframes. So basically it goes to frame, I believe 230 or so. It's going to delete those last couple of frames because I don't need them. You can also choose to simplify F curves to help out your animation. I'm not going to worry about that today. Blend range. Um, basically, how many frames you want to blend between one action or another. Um, if you're doing two different actions, you may want to use this. Because we have a continuous walk cycle that we're trying to create, I'm going to actually shrink this down to one so there's little inter interruption in our walk cycle. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Should take only a few moments. Or a couple more mo moments. Then when this is done, we can repeat it. And we can repeat it, repeat it how many times you like to, but just remember it's going to do more calculations and take up more resources to do so. And as we can see so far, we with good mocap files, you can animate your DAS characters pretty quickly. And just while we're waiting, I recently bought the iClone set from Real Illusion and if this set came out sooner, I, I'm still, I still have good use for iClone, but I may have hesitated on buying it as soon as I did because I could animate everything here in Blender because I generally, no matter where I do my animation, I generally render in Blender. And this is taking quite a while, a little bit longer, so I might just come back when it is finished loading. All right, that part is finished. So if we go beyond frame 227, we don't have any more keyframes, no more motion. But we have our motion there. Now let's hit, oops, just wondering. So if we had two actions that we loaded, we can use stitch actions to merge those together. And same thing, blend range, how many frames you want to take to blend them together. It's not what we're doing today, we're just doing repeat animation. So I want it to go two times. Hit OK. This also may take a while, so... Oh, uh, it's a lot quicker. But now if I go beyond frame 227, it continues to walk. And I believe it'll go up to about four, what like 460? Yep. So there you have it. That is the BVH importer that works for Blender 2.8. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave some comments below on what you plan to do with this and subscribe to W3 Productions for more tutorials like these. Thank you. Have a blessed day.